and three. Okay, so uh, good day, everyone. So this is Jing again with the Book of Vista Sea Talk. We're on our 11th episode today, and we have two extraordinary gentlemen from Mahalati that are going to come and tell us a little bit about their journey through interior design and making uh, making more beautiful homes. Um, so before we get started, I'll go ahead and uh, just talk a little bit about why we do this. So the purpose for these community talks is really to inspire delight and we're building a trusted community where property owners can discover great talent. And so we take it upon ourselves to find trusted industry professionals that have a proven track record and establishes this established businesses in the region. And I, as the moderator today, I'll ask questions on behalf of our owners. Um, nothing too personal, but you know, questions that owners might typically ask. The format will be pretty simple. So we'll introduce uh, ourselves and we'll introduce our guests. Uh, we'll have a discussion with Mahalati. Uh, we'll look at their portfolio and some of their services, and then we'll finish with some closing statements. Okay, um, just a little bit about myself. My name is Jing. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Book of Vista. I studied at UC Berkeley in 2002, and previously I worked at Airbnb and Amman Resorts. Uh, a little fun fact about myself, once upon a time, I danced in a Bollywood movie with uh, Rich Gresham and Ashwari Rai. So that was, that was in my early 20s. A long time ago. And uh, so one of the purposes, um, the mission of our company is to inspire delight through hospitality innovations that positively transform guests, partners, and employees. And the purpose for doing this C Talk today is actually to positively transform owners. So we're hoping to educate owners um, who are new to uh, building properties in Bali or new to thinking about renovations, uh, showing them a correct path. Okay. Without further ado, I'd like to bring our two guests uh, in focus now. Uh, we'll start with uh, Jody. Jody, uh, welcome to the talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Uh, Jody, could you tell us a little bit about what you do at Mahalati and maybe a little bit about your background and a fun fact about yourself? Sure. So officially, I'm the deputy CEO, which just basically means uh, the assistant to the CEOs in many ways. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's different to co-CEO. Uh, it's sort of like chief operating officer, but anyway, we feel like that works. Okay. Uh, so basically, I, I do a lot of the back end stuff. I, I manage the Mahalati interior, uh, the operations, the hiring, the processes, and dealing with the clients, et cetera, et cetera. Perfect. Um, I studied at Bali International School, uh, formerly Bali International School. Now it's called Bali Island School in Sanur. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't finish, but that wasn't because I didn't want to. It was for other reasons. Um, and fun fact would be I got denied um, entrance at the Australian military once. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's exciting. All right, yeah. thank you. Uh, Jody, for that wonderful introduction. Should I explain why you got denied? Should I explain why? Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, because so, that's the fun fact. All right, all right, all right. All right tell us so more. The fun fact is, I was, I was in Australia. I was really young. I was really broke. And a lot of advertisement on TV, join the military, join the military. So I said, okay, I called them up. I have a Kiwi passport, just to let you know. I called them up and I said, oh, it's probably all the same. So we did the process all the way until the end. And they said, okay, cool. They called me. They did the blood test. Uh, they, they, they're going to station me out to a certain place in the middle of nowhere. I said, sure, sure. And then the last question was, I just want to confirm your passport. And I told them my passport number. And they're like, do you have a special passport? I'm like, it's a New Zealand passport. They're like, oh, if you want to join the New Zealand military, you just go to New Zealand. I, I, I thought it was all the same because it was <laughs> so close. I thought like, you know, because Kiwis can work in New Zealand and Australia and vice versa. And then that was it. He said no. And I hung up the phone. And I was like, whoa. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, you think they would have checked that in the very beginning, right? <laughs> Rather than at the end. Yeah. Well, um, you never know. Maybe maybe Australia would go to war with New Zealand. And so then, you know, they can't have you. They can't have you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That, that is a fun fact. Thank you very much, Jody, for that uh, very personal uh, reveal there. Okay. Next, let's go to uh, John Khalid. Uh, the, the, the company's name is named after you, I think. So uh, uh, maybe you can tell us a little yep. bit about So I'm the original. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm the original founder of Mahalat's Interior and um, are mainly at the moment focusing more on the growth, on the international collaborations that we're doing, on getting projects and also trying to connect the dots between other services that we are offering such as we have our own factory facility called the Factory Indonesia mm -hmm. um, and other very exciting projects that we can speak about in the future. Amazing. Um, where did I study? I went to business college in Denmark, um, taking an entrepreneurial course there. Nice. Um, it didn't last that long, but um, managed to finish my studies there. And a fun fact is that I actually got myself into a TV reality show called The Apartment for Interior Design. Wow. Which actually turned out being more of a humiliation than actually <laughs> <laughs> what I would think it would. Um, it was tough, it was heavy, and it was embarrassing, I tell you that. But uh, that was my early 20s, and right. um, that was how I thought I was gonna become famous. But it nice. didn't work that way. <laughs> hey, they say any press is good press, right? The only bad press is no press. So uh, mm -hmm. that that's fascinating. Um, what did did that did that reality show actually was it formative in 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 making you decide to go down this career path, or was it was it? I was, I was already in the sorry to interrupt, um, but I, I was already down that lane. I mean, I started. I came here in two thousand and eight to work for one of the biggest uh, wholesale retail furniture companies in okay. Bali, and um, mainly the way that uh, I was boosting my sales was we collected everything from Indonesia. So we had a catalog with more than probably forty, fifty thousand items. Wow! And People would come down here mixing and matching containers for their own houses or people who would just have bought a, a holiday house in Bali for rental or whatever would come in and basically have everything under one roof. And the way that I figured out how to basically, you know, boost the sales was to recommend people mm -hmm. um, that this chair would go very well with this table, you should have this lamp and all this. And <laughs> I found out that there was a huge lack in people's understanding of how to mix and match and put things together. Got it. Um, over time, then, I started doing this by myself, and I realized that people actually charge a fee for this. <laughs> and that, that's, that's how we started Mahalat Interior. Okay. okay. Um, by, by, by helping uh, people rent uh, villa villa owners uh, then slowly slowly got into more hospitality as well such as small cafes restaurants and now we're doing a lot of hotels okay um but it it, it was a lot in between um uh, consulting in a way on what should be there in their house and then at the same time also helping them because sometimes we were working directly with factories mm -hmm. and if you didn't have the technical side of this uh, side of it um, sorted you know you don't have the budget to make the same mistake twice so okay. that that is where we were um, getting really strong in what we were doing actually and helping a lot of these uh, private clients, such as professionals as well, but but allowing them to work directly with the factories. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and go into that part. So, as promised, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the collections on your on your website, and perhaps uh, perhaps you can walk us through whatever you would like our owners to see. Like, is there any particular projects or anything that we can explore? Mm -hmm. If you go down to the almost end bottom of the uh, projects, uh, sorry, go go up on the top. Okay. Uh, yeah, there. If you click our projects, uh, then I mean the way we started to just get into how we have evolved during these last almost seven eight years now. We are we are in the business. Um, if you go down to almost the right, bottom. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of everything. So if you click, for example, the Sanchaya, which is the um, second row up on the left. Ah, yes, Sanchaya Bintan Island. Okay, wow. That the really the cool. Sanchaya Bintan Island, uh, in, in Bintan Island, it was a, one of the biggest contracts that we uh, 
have gotten so far. Um, oh. That was a full FFE project. So basically, we were working with a huge design firm called P49, which is in Thailand, designing a lot of five star hotels. Nice. Um, and, wow. and we did the whole uh, procurement for all the loose furniture. Nice. Um, wow. That, yeah, it was, it was actually, I think, 2017 or 16, it got voted as one of the most beautiful hotels in the world. Very good, very good. Um, so, so, yeah, that's how we started. Then if, if we go a little bit back, um, slowly, slowly, what our services started evolving in, if you go a little bit up, you could take, for example, the one just on the top, um, or Red Door Bali. Uh, I think I saw that one. Yeah. Okay. I'll find that. Red Door Bali. Yeah. Okay. Villa Vogel, Red Door Bali, or one of these. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. General Chow. Wow. And Myanmar, too, as well. Mm. So, slowly, slowly over time, what we've been going into has been more being, being between designers, architects, and manufacturers. So, there's been a lot of technical consultancy. We've been um, doing a lot of the technical work because when when the when the drawings shop drawings comes from either the architect or the technical uh, or the designer, mm -hmm. a lot of it is more just to get the overall understanding, but not really the the whole ergonomic of it, the functionality, um, how it's put together, and all these kind of things. That's where we come in and and make sure that the language gets converted to the factories. Mm -hmm. Red Door Bali is a very good example because we were working with a very, very uh, famous designer from Australia called George Goro. Okay. Um, he was the main concept and idealist about this house, which is actually, it was his first house in Bali, which went on for rental as well. Excellent. Uh, but based with our, our experience, knowing what the capabilities is here in Indonesia, we allowed him to make everything possible. Excellent. This almost everything possible, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's also been an award-winning uh, project, this one here, and uh, was one of the first projects that we got on our portfolio actually eight years ago. Amazing. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, wow, I just I just wanted to comment on something. So mm -hmm. back here on the Sanchaya, I noticed, I noticed these are very unique pieces, like these, uh, I guess these are reading chairs that are sort of hollowed out. That's that's amazing. The, I've never seen anything like that before. Um, yeah. Where where do you come up with like the inspiration to? And these shapes are also pretty unique. I've seen leather couches, but but not so bubbly or maybe Ruben esque. Um, where where do you where do you actually? Yeah, where where does the design inspiration come from for for coming up with these pieces? A lot of these architects and designers are designing some of the most leading hotels in the world. So, you know, it's a lot of knowledge, it's a lot of education, it's a lot of different work. And, and you know, it's it's basically researching a lot about history as well, because a lot of this is, is what you would see in a, you know, mid-century beautiful place in London or, yeah. I mean, and, and, and that's where the interesting part comes in because down here in Indonesia, you know, the artisan and the craftsmanship is so talented. Yes. So, so qualified to make almost whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing is they've just never had the same technical background and, and, and um, educational background when it comes to carpentry and understanding of architecture as, for example, where we grew up in Denmark. Denmark right. is extremely famous for this whole... Uh, Danish designs, you know, the architecture, the design, the carpentry. So we've been trying to to collaborate a lot with 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 all Danish uh, architects, having them coming down, sharing knowledge, you know, um, to to really get this up to standard. Uh, okay. And the day to day, I, I must say that we we six years ago we opened our own manufacturing facility in Chipara. Okay, very good. Very good. So we, we, we got the day-to-day -day, uh, 10,000 square meters mm -hmm. of uh, furniture factory. Amazing. Um, where we custom make to the client's needs. Got it. Okay, okay. That's, that's fantastic. Now, um, just to understand a little bit more, so you do more than just the manufacturing. You also do the design and you also translate the, 
you, you problem solve too, if I understand correctly. You look at the client's exactly. intent and you translate that into the actual end pieces and and the ergonomics and the the sort of, like I think the the language of the of the room. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cool. Cool. Really if great. You, if you go back quickly to to the last project, uh, just to show you, because then you've seen a little bit of the evolvement. If you okay. go on the top. Um, Yeah, the mm -hmm. second row down on the left. Second row down on the left. Pantai yeah. Murtasari? Yeah. Okay, all right, let's open that up. So for example, this villa has fully been designed, produced, right. and um, furnished by us. You know? wow. So that, that's like a one-stop project where we've done it all. Got it. Uh, so yeah, slowly, slowly over time, the involvement has been more and more uh, catching the, the the whole 360 package and really cool. adhere to that, and also make it cost effective because when you when you go with one company for it all, um, one you save a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The language has already been merged together, you know, uh, which is something we found very difficult that over time <laughs> it can be quite complicated uh, when you're working too many people on the same job. Sure, sure. Um, especially sharing the timelines, the deadlines, etc., which of course then end up things getting over budget, client not being happy. Um, now we, we can proudly offer the whole 360 package. This is really interesting. I like, I like your play of contrast here. So you have a bathroom with, like, I, I like how you split the photography. So it looks like almost like two different worlds juxtaposed together and i definitely see the cabinetry work here coming in with some scandinavian influence that that part looks very clean um and and this is actually pretty interesting too it's a it's a glass wing pole um that's that's very rare i've never i haven't seen that very often in bali actually uh cool cool good stuff okay so let's go back to um i guess the the main thread here and so this, this is actually, this is our second pro, uh, topic, but let's go to our first topic, which is tell us about like how your work actually positively impacts the property owner in terms of value, relationship and legacy. I know we've covered some of those bits already, but if we were to zoom in and say, okay, let's talk about your value proposition. Let's talk about your relationships. Let's talk about what kind of legacy that, uh, that owners can, can come to expect of their own legacies after having employed your services. What would be your responses to this topic? So, so specifically about value prop. So I think of it like this. If you're going to spend a million bucks or even 100K on a house, you want to allocate about 10% at least of your budget to interior design. Mm. And the reason for that is very simple. If you, you can build a house without interior design. <laughs> you can do it. It's not great, though. And I don't recommend it to clients. And, and I don't do this as a selling point. I tell them this as a logic point. If you buy land, and a lot of people just, a lot of foreigners, they buy land, first time maybe doing it in Indonesia, they buy a piece of land, they hire a cheap contractor from Java, and they got a whole team, and then they just start building. What happens is, first of all, they're unqualified, they don't know what they're doing, and let's say you don't know what you're doing as a client, so you start building things, and then like all of a sudden, you know, you get drunk with your wife, and you think about it, and all of a sudden you want to tear down a whole wall. And you tear down the whole wall, you gotta tear down the whole wall, you gotta tear out the piping. It's 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 not it's not simple and it's very stressful. So interior design allows you to do that on the computer. That's the the, the simplest way. Mm. You can make all the mistakes on the computer, everything that you can imagine, your dream house on the computer. That is the biggest value prop ever. So yes, it eats up a little bit of your budget. Yes, it takes a little bit more time. You don't get the physical thing as you want straight away. Mm -hmm. But planning properly, executing correctly will have tremendous long-term benefits. Um, doing it correctly has major long-term benefits in, in Indonesia. I'm sure you understand uh, being in the property business, you know, wrong wrong building materials, wrong way of executing the construction, et cetera. It it's so costly. Yep. And so if you can kind of minimize the cost, spend a little bit more, spend 10% more on interior design at the beginning, it's going to save you so much money in the long run. So that's that's it. That's not a sales pitch. That, that's just the reality of it. 
I, I totally get that. I mean, we in the management business have seen many, um, in terms of practical things, in terms of just rentals, uh, bookings having been canceled, reservations shortened, just simply due to, um, let's say, a failure of good design, right? Just a failure of basic services. Yeah. And on the opposite side, we've seen extensions, like when people come in and they go like, oh my God, this is much better than it looks on the photos. And, right. and I... I've always thought the, I'm kind of answering your question, no way, but I've always thought like the really good interior design almost makes people glued to the property. They almost feel like, like I want to, I really want to come back here because I feel more at home here than I do yeah. in my real home. Um, and, uh, and, and so that, that part uh, from a construction side is actually something that's, that's a little bit new too. Um, okay, cool. Um, any, what about, let's go to the relationship parts. What kind of relationships do you typically want to have with a, uh, with a property owner? Um, I mean, we, you know, we, 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 we've started really from the bottom, which means we, we started with the, with the typical villa owner who, who was just building one villa. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we, we, we wouldn't forget how we started. You know, it's not that we've gotten too, too big to not work with anyone right now. Mm -hmm. um, of course, over time, we've learned how to sort the people in terms of, okay, who's serious and who's not. And, and you know, when, when I originally started the firm, um, I'm very, I would call it artistic in, in my way of doing business, uh, where Jody, he's more, uh, everything has to be extremely broken down in contracts and etc which of course eliminates the 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 talkers and in 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 this in this whole business that we're in it's a lot about timing it's a mm. lot about timing everything is about deadlines everything is about budgets there's other teams which is coming in yep. filling out other work so it's extremely important that we know um that our clients know what they want um, or at least kind of know what they want. Of course, that's why they come to us. We consult them to make it um, realistic. But I mean, the day to day we work with anyone, you know, from the, the, the small private villa owner to doing 20 villas to do uh, hospitality, going into restaurant cafes, cruise which, ships. Cruise ships. Okay. We're doing at the moment uh, a boutique hotel in Zanzibar in Africa. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's really all about the understanding about what we're offering and accepting and respecting that we are in this to do something better. Okay. If that is the case, then we are open to work with anyone. And, and to emphasize the point, I think that's what builds the strong relationship over time is once mm -hmm. people understand that we have a very strict process and, um, we have experience and we're young and hungry etc cetera, etc cetera, that builds the relationship and that builds therefore the legacy as well okay all right fantastic really good um in terms of legacy generally there's a few themes that villa owners have told me before right some people build something so that they can you know be be sort of like a, a monument to their achievements so to speak right i built this crystal palace because mm -hmm. i'm awesome some people build it because they want to kind of give something back to their the village. They've served in a particular village. Um, some people do it to I don't know, like like to kind of just have a monument to hospitality. They like taking care of people. They like entertaining, so they want to have this. In terms of like what owners are seeking for in terms of legacy, and in terms of your way of providing for a legacy, where have you seen like the click? Like, has it been in sustainable architecture has it been in in entertainment has it been in like what what sort of legacies do do uh have you helped complete sure so um i think i like to think of it like this we're executing somebody's dream house mm -hmm. it's a part of them when they come to bali and they have some cash and they invest into it's something it's not just an investment they're they're investing into a, a life and that's to build the, the house of their dreams. And it's a very personal uh, uh, process. It's a very personal relationship. And therefore, they implement their own legacy in that. So for example, um, they want to feel you know, important in this house in some way. 
and they have their accolades, they have their achievements, etc., will build something that emphasizes their legacy. Oh. In specifically, and that's our job as an interior designer, is how do we emphasize something, a key point that they want to push into the project. So if they are, you know, a famous, successful X, Y, and Z, how do we emphasize that in a way that's obvious and non-obvious? So it's kind of, it's related to legacy because we, we basically, you know, are, are working for them to emphasize their, 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 their um, themes throughout the house and therefore their legacy as well. This is a common thing that happens. With us. Okay. All right. That's cool. That's cool. Very good. Um, let's go on to the next question. I have, we, 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 in the introduction, I think we talked a lot about projects already, but yeah. is, there any, is there any specific project? I mean, we, we talked about the, and in particular your most recent villa, but is there any, particular project that you feel like emphasizes your credibility and your talent. And it can be different projects for different spaces, I guess, too. Um, I, I'll, I'll go back to the website. I think we're actually, to be honest with you, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong Khaled, I feel like um, we're working, we're on, working it. on it right now, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Tell yeah. us about that. The keystone. I can't tell you, we can't tell you the client because we signed an NDA, but okay. it's huge. And it really incorporates all the hard work that Khaled has done since 2013 when he um, founded the firm. And then all the work that I've done the last two years uh, doing the fixing up the processes and the operations and the flow of business. And it's just those two things summed up into one gigantic 4,200 square meter interior design project so that the, the, the boutique hotel is way bigger. Okay. But it's, it's complicated because we're doing it online. And so it's all these things that we, uh, we hope to achieve, um, combining our, our, our two expertise into one project. So okay. that's, that's one that's, we're going to be, you know, promoting hopefully in the next, I would say eight months. Okay. Next that sounds, yeah, it sounds like you guys are rising up. Yeah. This is like, yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. I mean, we, 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 we keep, seeing the, the the growth and the motivation of becoming better and stronger and you know creating a stronger team mm -hmm. i mean each project we're doing is just getting more and more exciting to work on because we're seeing the whole the whole vision just coming together mm -hmm. um and and you know credit big time to 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 the whole operation i mean our designers you know we got what we believe some of the best indonesian designers in the country mm -hmm. um, and and we're so proud to get these international uh projects to be working on and then also introducing indonesian interior design on an international basis which is huge you know um i'm kind of curious how did this it, this sounds like an interesting progression, and it sounds like you're you're gaining more credibility at each stage, right? So, what sort of was the breakthrough on the Keystone project? What what sort of like like before you were doing this that, but but okay. now you get to do all of them, and it sounds like the first shot you're doing this. So, did did somebody take a chance on you, or how did well, that sort of happen? I think for the first part of the business cycle, it was more um, how do I say this. It was more romantic. It was more uh, as you go. It just flowed more. It was just try a bunch of things. But one of the things when I came into Mahalati was the, the social media and the marketing. Was uh, always strong. If you Googled us, we were always there. Okay. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, and then Khaled is just an incredible salesman. So he, he, he just knows <laughs> that he get in and, and, and have discussions with people who no one would ever have a discussion with, even at our age. And he just gets in, gets in right door etc cetera, etc cetera. then when i came in and fixed up the operations that's kind of like the last few pieces of the puzzle so it's kind of a combination the progression you're talking about i get it it's the combination of all the things so now we're finally at a point where i think we've got all of the things now whereas yeah. before it was like good marketing bad operations good operations not this so now we've worked up to a point where like we're almost done we're just about to renovate our uh, our interior design office it's going to look incredible okay and when we when we're done with that then it's over I, there's we've got we're very happy and comfortable with the progression we're, we're happy with all the pillars of the business etc cetera, etc cetera. so okay it's a, it was a natural plan, yeah. And our little legacy is actually to be able to get the opportunity of promoting 
interior design from Indonesia on an international basis. I, yeah. I really believe that many people forget how to credit Indonesia for what they're actually so good at. You know, everybody takes the credit on themselves. You know, <laughs> oh, it's made in it's made in America. It's made, but you know, 80, 90, or ninety five percent of it has been made here. I agree. Um, and it's it's so sad, you know, um, especially because the people deserves it. I agree. They, I agree. they really do. Yeah. Um, I agree. Um, you know, it's just a hidden gem, I think. Really. Yeah, I, I yeah, absolutely. When, when you said that 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 vision, that was my first impression when I came to Indonesia. Actually, my first impression was in where I come from in California. Only like the wealthiest, wealthiest people actually have good interior design. Um, it's very mm. rare. But when I, I remember just going around from restaurant to restaurant in, in Semiak, I was like, oh my god, each place is just more stunning than the next. Wow. It's almost like it's almost like you've been to Disney World. You know, each place is thematically <laughs> correct. And I I just never seen such a density of of excellent interior design anywhere else. So so I think I think that that's that's a very worthwhile mission. And uh, I also smiled when you talked about putting the pieces together because that sounded exactly like like how we started our company, right? Like you got one piece ready, you know, like you, you got to go get the deal first, right? And then you get the deal. And it's like, yeah. this is actually too big. I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you have to kind of build up your operations to to actually, you know, be able to, to digest the deal. And and so, yeah, it's always a uh, – that's that's really – I'm really happy to hear that. That's actually a very, um, very positive sign. Okay, um, great. Great stuff. So, okay, uh, working on the latest and best. And uh, we talked a little bit about this already, but uh, we know that we want clients that that kind of have a good idea of what, what they want to do before they consult with Mahayati and uh, Mahalati. And is there any other sort of relationships that you, you think are, are, are client expectations um, that, are, that lend to a more positive relationship? So... Um, a, a, you'd be surprised. A lot of inter, a lot of clients that, that approach us have never done interior design before. <laughs> and it's cool. It's great. It's no problem. We're, we're happy to work with them. No worries. But it's very important that to answer your question, who, the right type of client is the client that is willing to trust our process. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, this, if you've never done something before and you pay a decent amount of money for it, um, you're gonna want to dabble your fingers and oh, well, can I, no, no. We, we have a very we have a very strict process and it works. It's scalable. It works. It's idiot proof and it's revision proof. So we don't have to go back and fix so many things. And it was very well constructed for a reason. Um, so the the right type of client is a client that understands our process um, thoroughly and also respects it because they're. We, we, the point of Mahalati is it, we want clients to come into our door when our office is ready, mm -hmm. uh, fully renovated. Our office is ready. They come in through the door. They have a glass of wine. It's like a manicure. They come in and we are, it's like a, going to a spa. Don't worry. We got you. What are you going to build? No worries. Answer a bunch of questions. No problem. Here's your concept, etc. Here's your layout. Here's your 3D rendering. Bang, bang, bang. It's like a spa. And you don't get that level of quality of service in, in, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. It, it's very hard to, in, in all aspects of business, it's hard. Um, you get a lot of people saying yes, 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 but they don't give the execution. So we, that if we, if the when the client understands that, that's the right type of client. And and also the second one is um, sometimes, and we sometimes stay, say no to this now quite a lot, is. <laughs> The service fee is that much for a reason. <laughs> it's not. It's not that we're so crazy expensive. Actually, we're quite. Um, we're we're quite. Uh, how do you say this? Um, what's the right word for it? Um, we are very moderate, very in, moderate. In, in, in terms of what we ask for, what you get. Yes. I mean, I would probably consider with the services we are offering, which is very internationally offered right now you know it's not even competable in terms of what a design firm in Singapore or a design firm in, in, in Berlin or a design firm in New York or a design firm in Sydney would charge once you get into the whole firm and not just some freelance interior designer because there's a lot of interior designer 
we call them more interior decorators or stylists, so, you know, um, we are much more different than that. We, we, we can call ourselves a corporate company. I mean, professional. Um, so, so if if you want to compete us with who our competitors of what we see are, we less than half price, probably even one third or one fourth of the price of the same service, and sometimes even offering better services because we 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 have the the the, the S so P has and the designers are good as well. No, but designers are good, to, but based on your SOP. You to, know, sum, they, to summarize, is a client that understands that is the best client we want. So they understand, they look at the fee, they shopped around, they asked, they even asked for international firms, they saw our price, they're like, okay, that's cool. And then here's our process, and they go, okay, cool, I trust you, let's do it. That's the best client. We okay. even have. Uh, with other low competitors just down here where but it makes more sense because we can see the structure and the way of processing this work is making more sense um so i mean it it, it all depends about the client for some we might be super cheap for others we might not be the cheapest you know again that's <coughs> okay that's that's good segue actually um before before i go into the next question which is actually about fees uh, just to get like kind of, I'm an engineer, so I always like to think things in a systematic way. I understand that you you take on different sort of you you arrive at different you can arrive at different points along the user journey, right? So you can arrive at the very beginning, or you can arrive kind of like towards the end. They have ideas and they just need somebody to like execute and manufacture. What are some inputs that come into your system, and what are some outputs? Like, okay. From what I understood, like the client gives you money, they give you like their idea, and then you 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 deliver the room, I guess, right? Yep. Um, are there any other input exit points? Like, you know, yep. uh, does the client just come with like spec drawings, and then you you make some things for them, or what? What sort of are all the ways that a client can input with you, and what are the outputs that they would get from from that? Okay, so I'll explain into your design process in a nutshell. Sure. So client comes to us, they like us, they sign the agreement, they pay the deposit, and then we have what is called a project data sheet. Mm -hmm. And the project data sheet, because uh, building a house is fairly complicated. Yep. Interior design is pretty complex. It's not complicated, but it's very complex. It's somewhat engineering involved, right? Art and yep. engineering. So we have a questionnaire and we ask them question by question. And the questions can be something like, you know, what kind of style do you like? Um, what kind of person are you? What kind of what kind of personality does your cat have? Okay. You ask questions like, yeah, <laughs> it's important because we're building somebody's we're building somebody's uh, place where they live. So yep. it needs and, and it's custom. So we tailor exactly to the way they are and how they move. You know, we have. One client, very macho gentleman, big guy, you know, he's got a gym upstairs. He needs to be able to have access to his, you know, coffee machine and his protein shakes in the morning. He needs to, you know, we'll, we'll put those things um, either emphasized or not emphasized into the interior design. So anyway, we have a project, uh, we have a project data sheet. We answer all the questions. We get uh, mood boards, etc. Then we give them uh, uh, um, a concept design very interesting concept design, so you can see kind of the idea just to form the direction of where we're going. Okay. Once we go back and forth, we approve the direction, so it's not actually the thing, but it's just the direction. Are we going the right direction? Then we submit on AutoCAD um, the, uh, the, the layout. So it gives you an idea of um, perception of, of furniture. So for example, you know, originally I wanted eight chairs on the dining table, but actually when you draw it out, you only have room for six. And in, in your mind, you're like, it's been eight, but six is, is it's too much. So uh, that layouting process um, kind of uh, puts a little bit more borders into the idea, okay. right? It kind of like this. So you have the concept and the layout together. And then the client goes, okay, I understand the direction and I understand the functionality, the, the feng shui, the, 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 the flow of traffic in the rooms, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Then once we approve 
of that, then we go into the 3D renderings. So we take all of this information and we build 3D models um, up to spec. We have a very uh, stringent process for, for double checking with our manufacturer because we send the file over as a kind of like a secret. We send our file over to the factory and they double check uh, in terms of if the, uh, if the furniture items can be produced or not in our factory. Okay. Uh, Maybe they can give us recommendations as to some things that we shouldn't build because the weight's not correct, etc. We have all of these capabilities that other interior designers don't because we have access to the factory. Okay. So through all these things, we build the 3D rendering package. So it's a photorealistic. It's the first time that the client sees photorealistic images of their idea that we mm -hmm. all. I think there is a few on the the the, the project folder if you want to. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Yeah. Yeah. If you go probably down at the middle side of it. Okay. Let's take a look at the project folder. So after the renderings, we we finalize the renderings and then we provide the technical drawings, which is basically a blueprint. You take the that one. yeah the the yeah the one next to the banyan. You had the turquoise. Um, one next to the banyan tree. This one, Bali United. Yeah, on the right side. Oh, oh, yep. Felix Villa. All right. Let's yep, go. Exactly. Oh wow! That I yeah. That's a good example of yeah, how yeah. our renderings look like, and that does you know, look really good. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there should be no surprises actually at that point. Okay. All right. That's well, you've kind of seen what you've signed off to, and um, before anything gets produced or installed or whatever. I mean, nice. You already getting... know what the house looks like on the computer. Okay. So once you finalize the 3D rendering package, you know exactly that's the color, that's the aesthetic, et cetera. You approve of it. Then our drafters build you the technical drawing. So it's like a 70 to 500 page document. And it's the Lego manual book. You just give this to a contractor and, they, and you just say, just build this. No. Don't think, just build a thing. <laughs> you know, if you have any questions, fine, but just give him the thing and he'll make you the house. Okay. So okay. that's that's going back to the value question. That that's where the the true value is. Got it. Right. Well, and this this is around four years old. So mm -hmm. you can imagine how we've improved since then uh, yeah. in terms of our rendering okay. and design services. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We'll, we'll post them soon, actually. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So um, I guess last question then, in the simplest way possible, how do you actually charge for your services? So so we charge. Um, right now, we charge between forty dollars per square meter. Mm -hmm. okay. um, because of COVID, we've we've downgraded that a little bit, just so people because they're like, oh, it's COVID. I'm like, okay, okay. But for our international clients, minimum forty bucks per square meter. Okay, um, and that includes all of our interior design services. U.S. dollars, of course, right? Okay, uh, got it. Forty dollars. That's actually really easy to to sort of. Uh, was, we were talking about unit costs before, right? And that's a really easy unit cost to to yeah. us. So um, let me just actually understand a little bit more. Does forty dollars sure. a square meter mean the actual total floor size, or is it just forty dollars a square meter for the interior part? This question I've been asked that a few times. So <laughs> we 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 take the floor uh -huh. and we calculate that, and that includes the four walls. So it's actually a cube, but we only calculate the interior aspect of that. So that's that's the easiest way to calculate. So not the architecture, not the outside. Of Just the, the interior. Oh, okay, okay. So, oh, okay. My question was actually like, like, is it is it forty dollars a square meter for like the couch space and the places that need your interior design, or is it forty dollars a square uh, for right. everything on the floor? Well, so you decide. So let's say you just bought an empty piece of land and it's just a regular square. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say you want to leave an area for the patio, you want to leave an area for the garden. You can choose um, which areas that require interior design services. Uh, and if you the theaters, let's say you only want 60, that's okay. fine. We'll just design the 60 and then the rest will be for you. I see. Okay. Okay. That's actually pretty simple to keep track of. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you for that. That that makes it super easy. Um, and of course, we included included that um, you receive a BOQ with pricing okay. and everything 
plus samples uh, coming from the factory. So actually what, where we're a little bit different than the others is mm. that this already comes in as a bonus. Yeah. Um, so, so you actually have a bill of quantity with all the pricing for everything which has been designed from the manufacturing facility, plus you will have samples made from the factory, um, which should be very competitive in terms of the quality nowadays that we can get um, from other places. Uh, so, Just yeah, that's for, for our non-technical friends here, um, what's the benefit of having a bill of quantity? What's the benefit yeah. of having a bill of quantity? Yeah, okay. Um, so the real, the real benefit for producing a BOQ is you can finally see the value of your house. So once right. we've built it all, we've designed it, we've had the 3D renderings, etc., and you're sitting there wondering, okay, am I under budget? The true value of the house is when we go, okay, cool, this is your house, we've designed it, so we take all the items of furniture inside of the building and we put it on an Excel document and we shoot it over to our manufacturing facility and they give us a quote on literally if we build every single item in our factory and we submit and they can finally see, ah, okay. Perfect. So the cool thing is most of the time, 95% of the time when we present a POQ, the client just signs with us because they already trust us, they like our prices, but we never hold them to it. If they want, if they want, they can, they, go, and they can go and shop somebody else and compare. Usually they always come back or they go 50-50. Like let's say they have a friend, they want to do tables from them and they want to do the rest from us, that's fine. We, we are very, very confident with where we are the day-to-day -day for what we offer. So we always allow our clients to go compare apples to apples and come mm -hmm. back again. If they want to work with us, they're very welcome. If not, it's all up to them. Okay, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, it gives, I think, the client transparency on... So BAQ is essentially a shopping list for each particular material you're going to put in, how much of it is going to go in, and what's the cost per unit of that material. Um, okay, cool, cool. Um, I always, uh, I, I worked in construction a long time ago. I remember the BLQ was essentially the the ultimate control, I think, between yeah. the project manager and the client and the contractor over how the actual budget was actually going to turn out. So we, we, we usually, sorry to, to, to interrupt, but but we, we got two lists, basically. We got BOM, which, mm -hmm. is, which is the bill of material, which is usually for the project manager of the contractors mm -hmm. um, and the same thing there uh, we don't produce most of it ourselves unless it's wooden flooring or, or tiling or whatever sure. but we have extremely strong partnerships with some of the biggest factories in terms of that in Indonesia mm -hmm. and also in China so um, we, we can help assisting on that part it is included in our services um, so like I said um, and, and what Jody mentioned, you know, we, we literally just offer everything so that they can go out and they can find the best deal or the best offer anywhere. And if they can't, they can always come back and work with us at that point. Perfect. All right. Great. Now we've reached our final question, which is any last thoughts or any concluding sort of takeaways you want a, a prospective owner to, to consider? Well, I mean, we are open for business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. And uh, okay, um, if, if that's it, Khalid and Jody, thank you very much today for sharing your time this beautiful morning and uh, telling us more about Mahalati. And uh, and it's been incredible. I looked at your work; it looks very hip. It looks very, yeah. It, it's 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 like the trendiest stuff I've seen so far. So this is really cool. And uh, I wish you guys the best, and hopefully you'll get some uh, some referrals pretty soon yeah, from from interested parties. We look forward to working so together in the okay. near future. Okay. Yeah, thank you.